This is a 35-inch all-terrain tire. And this is pretty much the same tire, except 2 inches narrower. The question is, which one is better? A few weeks ago, I ran a poll on a YouTube community post. To my surprise, 60% of you actually favored the narrow tire. At the same time, I ran the exact same poll on Instagram, and that result reached almost a 70-30 split. But the other way around. More people preferred the wide tire. Well, if we are doing it for the gram, the wide tire would definitely got more likes, because that pizza cutter just looked like it skipped lag day. But for those who are watching this video, we care more about practical performance. Does the wide tire actually have a larger contact patch? And which tire flexes better when we air down? So join me for a series of experiment to find out exactly how different they perform. And spoiler alert, some result really surprised me. At the end of this video, I will reveal which tire I end up getting a full set and mount it on my FJ. All right, let's get started. The tires I chose for our experiment were Mikey Thompson Baja Boss All-Terrain. The white tire is the common 315-70R17, and the narrow tire is 255-85R17. Some people may point out that these two tires are not equal in diameter. The 315 calculates to be 34.4, and the 255 is only 34.1. Yes, the math is correct. But if you read the brochure, the 315's actual diameter is 34.5, while the 255 is 34.6. I also measured both tires carefully using squares, and I can confirm those numbers. So the diameter or the sidewall height are pretty much identical. These tires also share the same low range E, which means the tire carcass has the same stiffness. This is especially important because we will compare how they behave when aired down. Therefore, the only difference between these two tires is the width, making this a true controlled variable experiment. The 315 and 255 millimeters refers to the overall section width, sidewall to sidewall. But what we care more about is the tread width, the stuff contacting the ground. For the wide tire, I measured 10.2 inches. And for the narrow tire, I got 8.5. To measure the contact patch, I applied block printing ink to the tread and painted it on paper. Starting with the white tire at 40 psi, intuitively, I was expecting a short rectangle that looks something like this. But instead, this is what I actually got. It was almost a perfect circle. Dropping down to 35 psi, which was the recommended pressure for my setup. The circle got bigger, but still, we didn't have the full tread width in contact. I continued to reduce pressure, and the contact patch got both longer and wider. Only when I aired down to 5 psi, we finally had the full tread width in contact. And here is what 0 psi looks like. Many experienced wheelers will tell you, Airing down does not increase the contact patch width. It only grows longer like a tank track. And that was also what I believe all these years. But my data showed otherwise, at least for this particular tire. I then swapped in the pizza cutter and repeated the same measurements. Starting at 40 psi, the narrow tire also had a wrong contact patch. And just as expected, it was narrower but at the same time, longer. As we air down, the contact patch also grows longer and wider, just like the other tire. If we plot the contact patch length versus tire pressure, we can see both tire behave very similarly, except the narrow tire was consistently longer. For contact patch width, it was the other way around. Now, I'm sure you are eager to know which one has the bigger area? Because the contact patches are not rectangular, we cannot simply do width times length. 
So I scanned all my block printing in true scale, manually traced the border of each contact patch, and then used my vector editing software to compute the exact area in square inches. And here is the area versus pressure curve for the wide tire. And here is the curve for the narrow tire. They were almost on top of each other with no practical difference. Many people naturally assume a wider tire means more rubber on the road. But as we just saw, the narrow and wide tires yield the same contact patch area. We are just trading between width and length. Now, what about a completely different tire? Does the brand and model affect contact patch? And this got really interesting. When I measure my BF Goodrich KM3 mud terrain, identical size and low range as the wide Baja Boss, I found its contact patch has a totally different shape. It was more rectangular, wider and shorter. But to my surprise, when I traced out the area, the KM3 was actually 10 to 20% larger, especially at very low pressure. Keep this in mind as we will see something even more interesting near the end of this video. Here I want to shout out to a fellow YouTuber, Robert Pepper. If you've been everywhere else and not found what you're looking for, try my channel. Robert is someone I highly respect. My contact patch experiment was inspired by the one he did for the same topic, except he measured tires that were a little more different from each other and we adopt different techniques to measure the area. But for the most part, we came to similar conclusions. I will link his video in the description below. In Robert's video, he brought up a very interesting theory. Because the narrow tire has a longer contact patch, then the tire can better sort of mold around things, um, rocks and pebbles like this. And I feel that's an advantage as opposed to um, just sort of being very short and not having the length to sort of caterpillar track over the top of that. I really like his word choice, caterpillar track. And it makes intuitive sense to me. But I would still love to see it in action and quantify the difference. So. That was what I did. I conducted two different experiments for this. In the first experiment, I lowered the tire onto a piece of rock and measured how much the tire deformed at various PSI. I made sure the rock was centered so the tire bulged out equally on each side. I measured the gap between the tire and the ground by stacking wood shims with various thickness. The rock itself was 5.06 inches tall. So how much the tire caved in was 5.06 minus the height of my filler gauges. I jacked up the tire every time I changed pressure because I found the deformation of the tire will affect pressure reading, especially at very low pressure with large deformation. Yeah, it was a lot of work, but this gave me the most consistent and accurate measurement. Starting with the wide tire, the change was very minimal at higher pressure. Dropping from 40 psi all the way down to 15, the tire deformation barely even changed. Only at 10 psi and lower, we started to observe some meaningful tire flex. But at pressure this low, the risk of heat beating is significantly higher. For 90% of us, up here is where we operate. And at these pressure, we ain't got no flex. Now, let's see how the narrow tire compare. Right off the bat, at 40 psi, we already observed more tire flex, and it gets better. At 20 psi, which is still fairly conservative for off-road, we already have double the tire flex as the wide tire. To achieve this much tire flex, the wide tire has to drop down to around 7 psi, and that is definitely B log territory. Interestingly, near 0 psi, the wide tire actually caught up. My theory is, at extremely low pressure, the tire deformation across the width started to kick in. Basically, it became more of a 3D deformation. The 255 tire wasn't much wider than this rock, so its 3D effect wasn't as pronounced. But, what if the rock is wider? 
A rock ledge or staircase type of obstacle is very common. These obstacles can easily span across the entire tread. How would the wide versus narrow compare in that situation? I replaced the rock with a long 2.5 inch diameter tube, which eliminates all deformation across the width. Now, both tire has only 2D deformation from to back. After seeing the result, I was so glad I pulled through the second experiment. But before I show you the result, I need to share something important. Did you know? This video almost didn't happen altogether. Earlier this year, a major tire manufacturer reached out. They asked me to be their brand ambassador and review their new off-road tire. I happily accepted, but as it turns out, they weren't very excited about how technical I got. I was not even allowed to measure the tire in my video. After some back and forth, I respectfully returned my free tires and terminated our contract. I'm not disclosing who that company is, but just to be clear, it was not Mikey Thompson I used for this video. And this was where Yoda Expedition came in. They are a new company specialized in Toyota modifications. When I proposed my video idea to them, they were way more excited than that tire manufacturer. Since they carry all major brands, I am now free from brand affiliation. I can do whatever experiment I want and present my finding truthfully. And that is why you are able to watch this video right now. So please thank Yoda Expedition by checking out their website and YouTube channel. Links are in the description below. Alright, let's get back to our experiment. Now the obstacle spans across the entire tread, both tires deform less. For the white tire, I measured identical tire flags from 40 psi all the way down to 15. The tire was visually deforming, but the bottom of the tire was just approaching a flat line. It didn't mold around the tube. Even at 15 psi, the practical tire flex was still merely half an inch. Only below 10 psi, we started to see more increase. But like I said before, 90% of us would never get this low. And now, it's time for the pizza cutter. Pizza time. Right off the bat, the narrow tire had the same amount of flex at 40 psi as the wide tire at 10 psi. As we air down, the pizza cutter also started to deform much sooner. At 15 psi, we already reached 1 inch deformation. Whereas the wide tire has to drop down to 5 psi to achieve the same. And when we drop the pizza cutter to 5 psi, it completely molded around the tube and touched the ground. This was something the white tire never achieved, even at 0 psi. At this point, I was fully convinced the pizza cutter was the performance choice, at least for what I like to do. But man, I still couldn't get over the look. So it would be so nice if there's a tire that can both flex over rocks and look thick at the same time. But what if I told you, there is such tire, and I already have it. Remember the KM3 having a very different contact patch? Guess what, it also behaved very differently over obstacles. For the rock experiment, despite the KM3 being 315 wide, it flex even better than the 255 Baja Boss. My theory is, this is thanks to KM3's linear flex zone design feature. Few tires out there actually advertise to have a similar feature. So BFG clearly knows how to rock crawl. For the second experiment with the tube, the KM3 started out flexing the least at street pressure. But it quickly caught up as we air down. Although it didn't surpass the pizza cutter, the KM3 was still significantly better than the Baja Boss with the same size. So my KM3 was truly the best of both worlds. And more importantly, they were already on true B-Lock wheels. So I could actually utilize the ultra low pressure. But if my KM3 is so good, why on earth I am looking for alternatives? Well, 
off-road performance is only part of the equation. My FJ is not a dedicated rock crawler. Despite how much I care about off-road performance, there are still a lot of other aspects for a well-balanced setup. I will go over all those in a future video, so subscribe if you are interested in that. Now, which Baja Boss AT did I end up getting a full set for my FJ? My heart still goes to the white tire, but as a mechanical engineer, I followed what the data suggested. I chose the pizza cutters. A 35 inch pizza cutter is a very rare size with short supply. I will leave the links to where you can get these in the video description. Besides the experiment we did, each 255 Baja Boss was 7 pounds lighter than the 315. And all 7 pounds came from the tread, which has the greatest impact to the moment of inertia. The narrow tire is also much easier to fit especially on an IFS Toyota. If more of us consumers realize the benefits of pizza cutters, we will see more tire manufacturers start offering them. Again, I would like to thank Yoda X for making this video happen, so go check them out. Are you tired of being confused or overwhelmed when it comes to buying and installing parts on your Toyota? Our goal is to change that. With easy to follow installation videos and in-depth overview videos, we give you the confidence to buy and install the right part on your Toyota. So head over to yodaexpedition.com, we'd be glad to help.